So today we're going to be analyzing a, a phishing page. It's an HTML document that's posing as a uh, office document. But before we do, if you all have any questions about this video or would like to download the sample to follow along, you can go over to ringzerolabs.com. There will be a link to the report in the description. And you can follow along with the analysis and download the sample. But today we're looking at this document here, this UPS receipt doc.html. That's uh, clearly trying to pose as a document with uh, file extensions turned off. That's what it would look like. But if we go ahead and open that up, we can see that it is a local HTML document, so it's not really reaching out anywhere. And the background is a what looks like Office and a bunch of garbled text. And then it's clearly saying here that um, you know this can't be viewed. You need to download a compatibility update uh, plugin. Um, which is a little fishy. So if we go ahead and look at the HTML document in a text editor, we can see that there's a lot of Base64 inside of it. Uh, a lot of Base64. So if we go ahead and just take one of these, for instance, we can get this first one, copy that to a new document, select all of it, and Base64 decode it. And it looks like that is a PNG. So that's a picture file. So we save that as just one. And we can see here that it's a little word logo. So that's mostly what all the Base64 is, is the Base64 encoded all the pictures that you're seeing in the background. So the, the title head here, the text in the background, etc. But there's one down towards the bottom. It's this one. Install MS Office 365. It is actually a zip. So if we go ahead, copy this out, just like we did with the picture. Select all of it. Base64 decode it. We can see that it is, in fact, a zip file. So we can save that. And inside of the zip file, we see that there is a JavaScript file. It's posing as an executable. And that corresponds to this button here in the middle. If you click it, it will download a zip file to your machine. And Chrome, you know, flag this as potentially being malicious. Simply because of the naming scheme that's inside of the zip. But if we go ahead and extract the JavaScript file, which I've already done over here, we can see we can see that the JavaScript file is a little obfuscated. Um, it's not crazy obfuscated, but uh, things like this, like ht, and then ddt, and then there's another dd here. Obviously, these dds will be removed somewhere in the script, and then that will read http. So simple obfuscation. And here the, the URLs aren't even obfuscated, they're just in an, in an array. But coming down through, we see that um, it's going to go through, it's going to concatenate some things, and then it's going to open, open up a URL here after concatenating some of the uh, text from above. And I've already done this. Um, what happens when it reaches out to the initial URL is you get a 301 uh, moved permanently uh, message. And that moved permanently message is saying that the resource you're trying to access is no longer there. Please go here, and it gives you a URL here for the new resource. And if we download this new resource here, we find this script. And it is, again, obfuscated JavaScript. Um, it's all kinds of, you know, just tons of stuff in there. You can make out little words, but uh, for the most part, you can't really see too much. So what we find in this JavaScript file is that there's a discernible pattern here. This D75CXS, we can see that all over the place. Um, just a long string. So if we go ahead and replace all of those with nothing, 
we can see that the script comes out a little better. And we can see that there's still something that's being repeated, and that's this GOXE variable here. GOXE, there's tons of it. And the initial one starts out with a an assignment, this equal sign here. And then everything afterwards is a plus equal sign, which means that it's going to keep appending those strings to the previous string. And it's just going to keep going and going and going. So if we go ahead and concatenate all these things together, what we end up getting is is this and this is it this is it formatted and you can see all the the appending that's going on and if we go ahead and concatenate all that together we end up getting this so this is the final script that gets pumped out and it's similar to the other one it has similar domains up here in the array um, for this part here I've actually commented this out so that we could debug it but this part is actually going to create a dummy document full of random characters here and then launch it with the ws.run here and that's going to pose as a distraction to the user um, and when that pops up it's going to look like this it's going to be just like that and that's what that little routine did is just create a whole mess of random characters, throw them in a document file and open it up. And this is what the user would see. But immediately after that file is written, it goes into this loop here, this nested for loop. And it's going to reach out to another domain and download this file. But the interesting thing here, and the thing you have to pay close attention to with this nested for loop, is this added character on the very end if you simply reach out to one of these URLs up here in the array and tack this string on, what you will get is actually this entire script again. So this script that we're looking at now, it will download that again. That's what this big long string leads to. Adding this single variable on the very end here, in, which in equals two. So adding the two on the very end as seen here, we'll actually download an executable. Now to debug this, debug this file, this um, the secondary JavaScript, just to if you want to see how it downloads the executable, you can come to a command prompt and type in wscript forward slash forward slash capital X and then the name of your JavaScript file. And what that's going to do is launch the just-in-time debugger. And here we can, as you see, this is why I commented all that out, because I didn't want to write that uh, fake document. But we can place breakpoints down here, and as we want, we can step through the code. So step, step. And then we eventually get to the URL opening here. And then if you have a, uh, if you have Wireshark or some other network monitor in the background, you can see which URL it's actually opening up. And come here, and then it checks if the status is 200, which means that the file is able to be reached correctly. Here it's taking the response from the file that it gathered and throwing it into uh, one of the objects here and then it's going to write it out to an executable here and then if everything went good it's going to shell execute that executable so that's been quite a few layers of obfuscation and how to run through JavaScript fairly quickly um, if you're curious the resulting executable that uh, is downloaded after all this is uh, essentially locky um, it is UPX packed, as you can see where we at? here in the sections UPX yeah, 0 and 1. And that can be uh, unpacked with just about any UPX utility. Here we can use uh, CFF Explorer, come down to UPX utility and click unpack and then save the file. It's that easy. But even packed, the, uh, the prevalence of Locky is even seen underneath the packing as indicated here, uh, just about everything is, is saying it. Some of these 
that aren't seeing it could be because of the packer, but for the most part, everything is seeing it. So if you all have any questions on this analysis or how to deobfuscate JavaScript, HTML, um, things like that, hit us up at ringzerolabs.com. And once again, there is a full report on this as well as a download link to the file if you want to analyze it along with us.